The strongest player in Politiken Cup is a Frenchman called Laurent Vrezinem, and that is not how you pronounce his name, by the way, but I don't speak French. Um, anyways, is he any good? Let's find out. Well, in 2013, he played a game against Vladimir Kramnik, and what does that tell us? Yeah. Vladimir Kramnik, he was the guy that beat Garry Kasparov and took the World Championship title from him. So he's a pretty good player. How did Laurent fare against him? Let's take a look. This game was played in the Alekhine Memorial in 2013. And uh, Kramnik had the white pieces and kicked off with the knight to f3. So Laurent responded with d5. We then saw g3 preparing to fianchetto the bishop, knight to c6, d4, and out came the bishop attacking the knight. Now watch out for this bishop, it is one of the heroes of this game. Kramnik was very calm and collected and just protected his knight with his other knight. But now, out came the queen, emphasizing the power of the bishop on this diagonal. And that made Kramnik say, all right, enough of this nonsense. He played h3 saying, get out of my house kicking the bishop. The bishop moved back, the pawn was protected, and this is kind of a normal opening position. But now we saw the start of something truly great. e5. Let's go! Now this pawn can just be taken, and Kremlin did that. He just took the pawn. It's a free pawn after all. And now the Frenchman, he just castled. But notice how his rook is now in the game. Kramnik pushes another pawn. Fresenay develops another piece. Kramnik pushes a pawn again. The bishop moves back. And now Kramnik pushes a pawn for the third time in a row. He's after this knight, you see. But Fresenay, he's a clever cookie. And we are about to witness a little bit of chess magic. Now it was Fresenay's turn to push a pawn. But it's not about the pawn. It's about the rook. This rook. Fresenay, he wants to clear this file so that the rook can participate in the attack. Kramnik, he pushed his pawn again. It's the fourth time. He's attacking the knight. He's going, go back with the knight. And I imagine that Fresenay looked him in the eyes at this point, saying, you forget one thing, mister. Mr. Old Soviet player from the technical school. Yeah, I know you. You just want to have like a material advantage that you can like take my knight and then hone some advantage into a winning and game in 60 moves. But you forget one thing, mister. I am French. I am a romantic. I am channeling the spirit of La Bordenaire. I don't care about the material. Take the knight. All I want is an attack. An attack. So he left the knight. He turned the attention to the other side of the board and he took his pawn. Now Kramnik, <laughs> Kramnik took the knight, saying, all right, let's do this. Did Fresenay take the knight down here? Nah, -uh, not so good, because his queen would be lost. So calmly, coolly, collected, he just took the pawn. Did Kramnik move his knight? No, he didn't, because if he did, then Fresenay would put his knight in here, threatening a very nasty check, and this attack would, would just be devastating. So Kramnik did something very clever, very interesting. He pushed the pawn, attacking the queen. The queen went, well, I'll just take that pawn, it's no problem. It's a free pawn. But now Kramnik, he played the knight in. And now the knight is attacking the queen. He didn't do that before. This forces the trade of knights, and with the knight to trade it off, there are no longer a nasty check. So Kremlin was like, yeah, I just refuted your attack. And Fresnay was like, sure you did. Now the bishop came out. And I want you to notice some things about this position. Do you see how black's pieces are active? How this bishop is doing something, it's in the attack, and this bishop is doing something, it's in the attack. This rook is very much in the attack. 
This rogue is kind of in the attack and is really ready to go. The queen very much in the attack as well. Now let's turn our attention to the uh, white pieces. This knight is out, yeah, sure. But the rest of the heavy pieces, they're on the back rank still. Not exactly stiff opposition, eh? Now I am, of course, half kind of joking when I say that because Kramnik, the former world champion, 2800 plus rating, really fantastic player, he is a knight, a full knight ahead in the piece count, which is a lot. Uh, so the real question is, does Fresine have compensation? And that is what we're going to see. So Kremnik, uh, he tries to get a, he tries to keep up with the development. He puts the bishop out, like here, but now Fresine he captures the pawn like this, forcing White's bishop to move again. And now Fresine he puts, puts this bishop back on this very dangerous diagonal. Do you remember how this bishop came out there in the start of this game? and he just wanted to emphasize this diagonal using it for an attack. Well, now there are a lot less pawns in its way. At this point, Kramnik says, you're not the only one who can attack, stupid Frenchman. I've been world champion. I'm coming after you. And he does so with queen h4, bam, attacking the king, going for checkmate. Fresenay, he's just really elegant. He just puts the king over here, defends the pawn. Kramnik gets ah, mad, so he puts out another bishop going, we are going, I'm going for you. I'm going for checkmate here. But notice how the game is like taking part in two different parts of the board. So there is attack over here, and then there are attack over here. And when, there are, when the board is split in half like this, and both sides are attacking the opponent's king, it's very often a uh, question about who will get there first. And Fresne he sacrificed a whole piece in order to speed up his attack. So that's one piece less that he can use in the attack, but he is faster, he gets there quicker. He puts out a, out a bishop as well. And this bishop pins this pawn to the king, and that sets up some very nasty tricks indeed. So when the bishop pins the pawn to the king, then the pawn is no longer defending this pawn, meaning that if Fresene had an extra move, he could just come in, boom, and take that pawn with the check and white would be done for, it would be over. So he forces this knight to go back. Now it's, he's pushing him back. It's, it's back on the back rank again. And he just goes, bam, g4, I'm coming for you. Again, he's pushing the pawn. It's not only about the pawn. It's also about the file for the rooks, because if he gets these files open, then his, both of his rooks can come in like this and just go for the throw, go for the checkmate. Now Kramnik tries to block the path of the pawns with his rook like this. But boom, g4, pushing the bishop back. It doesn't matter that white is up the whole night. His pieces are useless, useless. And black's attack is just coming on, it's relentless. Notice, when the bishop moves back, it's no longer controlling this important diagonal. So now, Freshne, he can subtly improve his bishop to this square. Notice how this really is the hero piece of the game. Kramnik is desperate, he needs a counterattack. He slides the rook over, trying to set up some checkmate tricks. But now the bishop comes in attacking the knight. It just, look, just looks tremendous, this. Kramnik, he plays the queen up here, trying to set up checkmate tricks. Freysenay is unfazed. He just very elegantly slides the rook over, protecting everything, and notice how it looks like he castled kingside now. Quite interesting. Kramnik tries to get the rook involved and get it more active. But Freysenay, he wastes no time at all. He just captures this pawn with check and sacrifices another piece. The king has to take. Fresenay is down with two pieces now, but the attack rages on. Do you remember this bishop? Do you remember how it was the hero piece of the game? Well, like any true hero, it has to die a hero's death. So it captures the knight, the king recaptures, and our hero has left the building. But now, Fresenay plays g3 and just 
Look at those pawns. That is awesome. Kramnik doesn't even try to protect the rook. It is over. So instead, he moves his bishop up here because when, clack, the rook is taken, it prevents the pawn from queening. At the very least. But is it enough? Do you think it's enough? Nah, I don't think so. Kramnik tried to run, Forrest run with his king. It didn't really help the Frenchman. He just slit his rook over once, threatening to come down and mess everything up. Kramnik tried with his bishop to set up some trick, tricks like checkmate here. And Frisene blundered and it was checkmate in one move, end of game. Nah, totally didn't happen. What happened was the Frenchman, he just played like this, saying, what do you got, old man? What do you got? Kremnik wasn't too sure what he actually had in this position. He tried to put his bishop back here to block the pawn, but man, bam, came a check from the rook. Kremnik actually took the rook, but before Frasene could do anything, he also resigned. Because it is very clear what the romantic Frenchman who has sacrificed all his pieces in this game will do. He will capture the rook, then he will queen one of his pawns, and then he will queen the second pawn. And then he will have three queens. And I don't think I'm the only man who has dreamt of that scenario. All good tales must come to an end. But like all Disney movies, it also has a sequel. And you can watch Laurent Fréginet, the romantic Frenchman, play at Politiken Cup 2015. See you there.